Hey guys, this is Adrian in Formodio, and this is a quick episode in addition to our last one on shape layers and masks within After Effects. I just wanted to cover a few other aspects, including some realistic use case scenarios. So just bear with me as I point out some key functions within masks and uh, see if you learn something new. So first I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. Now when you create a new mask, I just wanted to point out that the mask points are absolutely editable. Uh, if you double click any point after you've created it, you can get access over the entire mask and move it that way. But also if you click away from your mask, and make sure that when you click away that these boxes turn into circles, and then when you go to click on one of those points, you can easily edit that and customize your own shape. And a quick shortcut for accessing your mask options. If you select the layer with your mask and press M, it'll always pull up your mask path. And if you double tap M, it'll pull up all the mask options that you have. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And I also wanted to point out that you could easily create your own custom mask with the pen tool up here, which we haven't covered in detail yet, but it's pretty self-explanatory. So go ahead to this top bar and click the pen tool. Now one thing you want to do is make sure that you have your solid selected, otherwise we're going to start creating a shape layer. So with your layer selected, go ahead and click. And if you click again, you'll notice it's going to create a perfectly straight line to that point. And you can continue. And you'll keep creating points until you click back on your original point to close it off. So now we have our own custom shape that you can also continue to edit. And if you use the shortcut G, you can always switch back to your pen tool easily and add additional vertices to your shape. So there's that. Now I just wanted to cover a few realistic use cases for mask layers. And one of the most popular and common ways that I use masks is to create a vignette. Now to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer. I'm gonna want a black solid. So what we wanna do with a vignette is get the edges of the frame to look a little bit darker so that we're focused on the middle of the screen. So another quick tip is if you go up and select the ellipse tool and you double click with your layer selected, it'll create a rounded mask that touches the edges of your composition. So this is exactly what we want because now we've isolated the corners of our composition which is what we're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and double tap M on my layer here to pull up my options. Now one thing we did not explore in the last episode was what this invert box does. And this is simply just changing what your mask is adding and turning it into a subtract option. For instance, we'll go back to add, click inverted, and you'll see we're getting the same results. So now we have the black just on the edges of our composition. Now we're gonna go ahead and add some feather to that. And you see we're starting to create a vignette there. If you don't want it to be a perfect oval, you can always you know, double click a point and scale it in. Go for something a little more stylized. You can also, you know, move your ramp and make it look like it's a light shining down on from above. Now another uh, common use for a mask would be to create something like a shadow or a floor. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new solid. Uh, I'm going to choose just a different shade of blue. Now let's say we want to give our scene some depth, so if you go ahead and just mask off your top layer, you can see you can create a sort of a floor effect, and you can uh, go ahead and feather that, and you'll start to create some interesting gradients of your own that are easy to customize. And by the way, another easy shortcut for creating solids would be Command Y, and that'll instantly pull up the options here where you can go ahead and just continue to create new solids. So I'm going to create a black one. I want to show you guys how to create just a quick shadow. So I'm going to turn this off. Now let's say you have a new box. I'm going to create one more layer here. I'm going to create a quick square. So let's say you have a shape like this and you want it to look like there's a shadow underneath it. Um, I'm going to select our black layer here and create a new ellipse. Now you can create a new oval like this. I'm going to turn my black layer back on. Add some feather to it. 
You can kind of get it to look like a shadow here. Turn the opacity down. So hopefully I didn't move too fast for you there, but those are some things I wanted to point out about masks, and I hope that it helps you in the future. Now be sure to join us next time as we actually get into the basics of animation. I hope to see you then.